Six months ago, I was shopping for a new car, and after going to a bunch of normal dealerships, I decided that it's too much of a problem, all the dealerships are corrupt, so I bought a Tesla. Because online, it said I can go 315 miles on a single charge. But as I live with this car, for some reason, I'm charging far more often than I thought I would actually be charging. So I decided to go on the 1,000 mile road trip to test if Tesla is lying to its customers and actually saying that the car can go further than it can actually go. Now, considering that this is a 1,000 mile road trip, I need to camp inside the car. So we're gonna go to Ikea. For seven dollars you can get a nice mattress from ikea that fits perfectly in the trunk of a model 3. and the closest ikea is only half an hour away from where i live so it's not too much of a task to actually go and get a mattress the greatest part about this though is that i'm not really wasting any time while i'm shopping at the ikea because the car is also charging so essentially i'm getting a little bit of gas while i'm here not bad at all so for this charger we're going to need this little thing that allows us to plug in non-tesla charger i'm gonna grab this charge point thing and then boom, plugs in. And now we just gotta tap my card. So the car, as we can see, clearly started to charge. On the inside, it's also charging. How fast is it charging? Six kilowatts, only 12 hours to charge from 22%. Not bad. The 18 hour drive is gonna be brutal. All right, I have a memory of a goldfish. So I don't remember where we're going, but luckily for myself, it is aisle 34, which is right here. Well, there's the dilemma. It's a $59 mattress, but it's nowhere to be found, which then puts us in a $129 category. This is a twin size mattress, obviously. This is allegedly, by my measurements, supposed to be into the back of a Tesla. Mattress is acquired and the road trip is supposed to become extremely more comfortable given that this thing is with me now. Honestly, I'm kind of excited. There she is charging up. There's the mattress, there's the car. From what I can see, this is pretty perfect. I do gotta unwrap so it becomes fluffier, but I'm not leaving for at least another day. Let's unwrap it right now. There it is, it's gaining its... I have a memory of a goldfish. Whatever it is, mattress is opening up. I'm gonna take these seats, put them down. I mean, the mattress is literally perfectly sized. So I just put it in literally in a Ikea parking lot. I'm excited for this road trip. This is super nice. Like I'm genuinely excited to just sleep in a trunk of a car. Like what? <laughs> but the mattress has been out of its pack for less than 30 minutes and it just feels nice. You would have significant amount of like pressure points. I might even just go and grab my pillows from my actual bed, bring them here. I think it'd be a sick sleeping position. Love it. Woo. And we charge three extra percent at the charge point station, which is kind of a W, but not much. Right now the car is saying I have 185 miles. However, in 70 miles, I'm gonna pull up to a supercharger with 27%. I have 62 right now. I'm not quite certain that that's actually the amount of mileage that I'm gonna get, but we shall test that. Time is exactly 7 p.m. on the dot. Perfect time to leave. It's Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> it said that it's an 18 hour drive, including chargers. Without the chargers, it's a 15 hour drive. So let's see if it's one, gonna take us only three hours on charging on this thousand mile road trip. And two, is the range a lie? Because realistically, if my car says I have 185 miles until it's empty, I should be able to go 185 miles, just like you would on a normal gas car. But my personal experience so far has been different per se. Let's say that. So right now it's telling me to go through like Dallas area and go north. I wanna go through Houston, down to New Orleans, and then up to Atlanta. Seven chargers, it should be the same amount of chargers. I don't know why it's sending me that way. Maybe there is some sort of traffic, but honestly, there is like a massive traffic jam right there. Quite fascinating, to be honest. Let's go, let's go, let's go, move it. So right now we only have 170 miles available. We're only 10 minutes into this drive and currently it says 8.2 miles more than what it should be. There is an officer somewhere close by. That's what that sound is. But good for us, we're going speed limit. So it doesn't even matter. So the weather I'm traveling towards is not ideal, but I think we will do just fine. Also having the autopilot is pretty great. Don't even have to drive, you just kind of exist in this space and overlook to make sure this thing doesn't hit anything. It's a very chill drive. So for 37 miles of range, we got 25.1 miles of 
actual driving. 11.9 miles due to my driving, 0.2 miles due to climate control, 0.2 miles due to elevation, and then apparently half a mile less than I usually use on everything else. Why would they claim that the car can go 300 plus miles on one singular charge when realistically we're using 25% more? Something seems off. Now my first very interesting pop-up says stay below 70 miles an hour to make it to your destination, which is my first supercharger. The first supercharger is 97 miles away. It says I'm gonna make it there with 2% if I were to follow the 70 mile an hour suggestion. But so the range says 130 miles. It tells me to stay below 70 miles an hour while the destination is 97 miles away. It doesn't seem right. Well, the first supercharger that I had planned for myself is too far away, so we have to stop on one before that. The problem is, is that supercharger is super slow. Different superchargers have different speed. And because of that, if I were to stay at this one and charge up to 100%, it would take double the time versus the one that I'm gonna go to next. Instead, I'm gonna be here for like five minutes, charge up just enough to get to the other supercharger that can charge way faster, which is gonna charge there for a little while. I think I could have made it. I think if I were to push it, I would have made it. But I mean, there's like genuinely no point in pushing it. We'll be getting to the supercharger in a couple minutes. Ugh. Grab this thing, plug it in. But because it's a slow charger, it's literally gonna take way, way, way too long. Starting to charge. 25 minutes to continue trip. But the car is charging, as you can see right there. Just leaving it here until it charges. But realistically speaking, this should not take this long. This supercharger is slow, but I'm not going to charge fully because instead I'm gonna go to a supercharger that's a little bit further down, but way faster. So we've been at this supercharger for about five minutes. Added nine kilowatt hours, which is decent. Might as well just press the button, unplug, and put this thing. Get in the car, 26%, and we're gonna add the supercharger. Says that we're gonna get there with apparently 2%, which may not sound like a lot, because it's really not, but what it is, is it's enough for me to get to the next supercharger. And if you remember it right, this one was charging at 113 kilowatt hours, which the next one is supposed to be at least double of that. Plug this thing in, and once again, we are charging. Nine minutes to continue my trip, and we are already charging at 157 kilowatts. So now it's only eight minutes to continue the trip, meaning that we've cut down our total trip stop time, and we're already charging at double the speed, way faster. So from the moment I got out of my car to the moment I got to the bathroom, I've literally managed to get 18% of charge. Maybe I should grab myself some snacks. Just got a notification saying that I can literally continue the trip. I don't even have to wait to actually continue my trip. You've charged enough to continue your trip, meaning I didn't waste any time. And in a normal car, I would have stopped at this gas station as well, because this gas station is just far away enough where you might want to fill up, might want to take a bathroom break, grab a little bit of snacks and water, and just continue your trip to wherever you're going. Just gonna eat my brisket biscuit sandwich and continue the trip. We're at 44%, we can actually continue the trip at 125 kilowatts still charging, which by the way, is still faster than what it was originally. So we're gonna, we're gonna consume this little brisket burger. And as soon as we're done, we're just gonna continue on our trip. All right, we got enough to continue the trip. Time is 9.12. And we're gonna get to the next stop was 27%. All right. So theoretically, we can go three times the distance if the range was accurate. Well, time is now 9.56, and we are yet at another Bucky's. According to this thing, it's only 0.7 more miles than expected, but rated mileage is 22.3 miles more. So we can get to the next supercharger destination pretty fast. And then as soon as we get there, I'm gonna utilize this bed that I created for myself in the back of this car. Plug in. Give me the green light. Come on, come on. Boom, there we are. Now we're charging and it says 20 minutes to continue the trip. Once again, we are at the Bucky's, the happy beaver. Look at this guy. But honestly, in the meantime, I might as well just lay down. Well, there I am. I mean, you can quite literally live out of here. So I just set up a 30 minute timer. Um, the car is saying it's gonna take 12 minutes to continue the trip. I'm just gonna... Honestly, it's uh, pretty convenient and it's very comfy. Did I sleep? No. Was I planning on sleeping? 
Eh, yeah, but with all being said, we are charged up and ready to continue to the next destination. Charged up and ready to go, cost us $12.25, 73%, 217 miles, apparently. So it's kind of been a while since I've had like a proper road trip, so I kind of forgot how <laughs> miserable they can get. But right now we got an hour and 39 minutes to go 109 miles, and we're supposed to show up there was 18%. We'll see how it goes. I just changed my navigation and it says that I'm going to get to that supercharger with 7%. And it's a fast supercharger too, meaning that I will not actually have to stay there. We're gonna show up there at 12.15. And at 12.15, I'm just gonna take a proper hour long nap, which I think would be amazing. Just got here with 4%. Got an interesting notification on my watch. Battery level too low. Vehicle consumes battery power while idle. Charge now. I know I'm at the charger. Like it says 20 minutes to continue the trip, but this would be the perfect location to actually take a nap. 23% more obviously is not accurate if we're going off of rated. But if we're going off of trip, it's only 5.7% more. Fascinating how much rated overshoots the capability of this car. Well, 88% of charge. Did I get to sleep? No, I got on a bunch of phone calls, but it was very, very comfortable. I'm not gonna wait for 100%. The first 50% of the fastest, then it slows down, and then anything after like 90 is super slow. Might as well just continue the trip. Another supercharger, and we got here was 5% 15 miles. Apparently we've used 85.4 miles more than the rated capacity of this car. Not only is that going under the speed limit for one, but two, it still doesn't give us the rated capacity. And yeah, we're still using another 40 miles. So even if I were to go under the speed limit below 70 miles an hour, we would still be using more than the rated capacity. Temperature is 69, it's like perfect weather. It doesn't make any sense on why they would rate this car. I mean, I'm literally driving on flat ground. Makes no sense whatsoever. <sighs> For this one, I'm actually gonna go to sleep. The car is charging. Charging really fast, actually. We're already at 44 miles. Very comfortable, actually. Kind of surprised how comfortable this is. Wake me up in 35 minutes. 35 minutes starting now. Wake me up in 15 minutes. 15 minutes starting now. I don't know how much to continue the trip. Nobody around. Oh well, maybe I should just like sleep here more. It's 4 a.m. The nap was much, much needed. We are at 293 miles. And I'm glad that I took that nap because I was getting really tired. Don't drive tired. Man, another supercharger. And just like before, we've used way more than rated for. Almost double of what we were rated for was used up during this drive for 133.9 miles. We've used up 208 miles of rated range. Honestly, ridiculous. Like, just say that the car can go 150 miles, I'll be happy. As you can tell, I'm getting really fed up with all this charging and the fact that the car is lying to me how far it can actually go. And we are approaching our second to last supercharger for this trip. And once again, we've utilized 20.2% more versus what it was supposedly gonna take. You learn to live with this. <laughs> I'm literally alone here. Here's the final supercharger stop. 20 minutes remaining to continue the trip. Final stop. I'll let it charge up, take a quick nap, and then be it. I'm gonna let it charge all the way and I'm just gonna sleep for now. Well, the final stop is over. 
which means that I'm finishing this 1,000 mile road trip. What are my takeaways, you may ask? The conclusion is clear. Whatever the car is saying, you're not gonna get unless you drive under 70 miles an hour, under perfect conditions, no stop and go traffic. So in real world scenario, ain't no way you're getting anything close to what the range is saying. But electric cars are great for in-city driving.